In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christos Anesti, Christ is risen. El Messiah come. Christos Anviat, Adaverat Anviat, Christos Voskres, Christ is risen. Truly is risen. What an amazing God we have. What a beautiful and amazing God we have who we, when we find ourselves here in this world the way we are, especially now with this pandemic, especially now as we have come to see how vulnerable we are, that something completely unseen, something so small as a virus, with all of our technology, with all of our innovations in different ways, we are all humbled. But our God knew all that. He knew all that in His providence and in His care. And from the very beginning, He was always with us and He was showing us who He is. But especially during these latter days, when God leapt down from heaven and became that, Himself vulnerable, a vulnerable child, born of a virgin during a tempestuous time in an empire that was very dangerous and even evil at times, he came down to show us who he is and because of him what we could become. He showed us that he did although was born into this difficult time as a vulnerable child of the Virgin, that he did grow in wisdom and grace. That by the age of 12, he knew exactly who he was, and he was already filled with God's wisdom and was teaching others. That he worshipped God in the temple, that he was obedient to Mary and Joseph, that he then grew and at the right time entered and went to a wedding and started with his ministry and became the, and turned water into wine so that we can celebrate. He is the one who then again and again fulfilled Isaiah and especially Isaiah 53 and took upon himself our diseases and our sins and wiped away the sins and cleansed all the bodies of all leprosies and diseases and healed them. He is the one who gives us hope and is this light in that darkness so that wherever anything comes in to try to destroy and break down, He is the light in the darkness. He is the truth in, in falsehood. He is the way of being in this broken world. And He is also the resurrection, our resurrection. How else, what else pops out, especially during this time, especially with this gospel reading, which is the, God, the reading for Thomas Sunday. Today is Thomas Sunday, and we celebrate all of you, Dave, Thomas, Tom, Thomasinas, any form of Thomas, the Apostle Thomas is celebrated today. And it's also called Andipasca. And it's Andipasca, not that it's against Pascha, anti-Pascha. It is instead of Pascha, so that we get another one. If you'd missed it last week, we get another one. That is the understanding of the Greek word Andi. It's another Pascha for us. And so Pascha is exactly that, his resurrection, and that he is the resurrection for us. So what does our good Lord do? the same God who came down from heaven to be Emmanuel and to be with us, is the same God who now, as he has destroyed death by his own death, trampled upon it, destroyed Hades, trampled upon it with his light, and the gates of Hades are no longer there, and all the souls are being brought into new life, and people saw their loved ones in Jerusalem, alive after his resurrection he doesn't go up to heaven immediately 
He doesn't just show that he is God and rise in some glorious manner immediately. No. He came down here to make us his very body, to say that he, we are his brothers and sisters, and to join us and to love us in that joining so much that he makes sure that he does not ascend without us. So what's the first thing that we see? Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb very early in the morning, even before daybreak, so that she can be close to the body, at least, of the Jesus that she loves, so that she can do what is the most holy and beautiful thing that she could think of and anoint his body after the Sabbath. She, she expected to see it, and she didn't. And she saw what? An empty tomb and did not understand. And God knows that we, you and I, don't understand things immediately. We don't understand about many things about this pandemic. We don't understand many things about our own lives. But God knows. And God knows that we don't know. And even though she sees the tomb empty, she doesn't go and say, He's risen. Even though he spoke about it again and again, she's scared. And not only is she scared, she's sad. Where have they taken him? And she insists that she thinks that it's somebody else has come in and stolen the Lord. As if God can be stolen from us. He can never be taken away from us. In fact, he's always coming to us. And so look at this God, that he knows she's alone, crying, at a cemetery and he himself goes to her and he says Mary he calls her by name and he says here I am I have risen and he goes I am going to ascend to my father and your father to my God and my in your God don't hold on to me let me go but go now that you see me and tell the disciples so she does and she goes and tells the disciples, but no, they don't understand, and they don't believe. So Christ knows that. And even though they're hiding, and they're inside their home, just like you're inside your home, he goes right through those closed doors. Nothing can stop him. No fear. No Roman Empire, nothing has stopped him, even death and Satan. And he goes right through those closed doors. And that's what he wants to do with you and me right now, to go through any closed doors. And he says, peace be unto you. Isn't that amazing? He says, peace. The peace above all understanding and that to guard our hearts and our minds the peace that is deeper than joy and love, the peace that comes because of this great joy and love and solitude, I mean, uh, solidity in knowing. He says, peace. They're glad and they're happy. We heard in the gospel. They're so happy. And he then again, as they're exultant in their joy, he says, again, peace be unto you. He comes to them. He goes another time in the gospel, it says, to Simon Peter himself personally. He goes also on the road to Emmaus because there are two of them that ran away and were leaving Jerusalem as fast as they could, getting out of Dodge, as we like to say. And so Cleopas and Luke go on the road to Emmaus to get away. He walks with them. He walks with them. And he starts talking to them. And he's saying, what's going on with you? What are you guys talking about? And they stood still and looked down and were sad. Like so many are right now stuck, still. And all they can do is be sad. And then he begins to open the scriptures to them. And he begins to show them how the Christ had to suffer these things and that he is joining himself in our suffering so that we can have the hope of his resurrection that overcomes all suffering and heals all things. That we need to believe that all things can be healed. 
So he goes to Mary Magdalene. He goes through closed doors to the disciples. He goes to Simon Peter personally on a, on a unique occasion. He goes to Luke and Cleopas on Emmaus. During all of this time, they're all excited and they're all taking it in and they're all trying to understand, yet still afraid, yet still hiding behind closed doors. But someone wasn't with them, Thomas. And Thomas is a special case but not so special. He's a lot like all of us. There are many of us who, when something happens like this tragedy happened for him, the existential crisis that happened for him, the smashing of all understandings and dreams and hopes that happened to him when he saw Christ himself crucified, when he was willing to go die for him and go with him to die in Jerusalem, but then fell apart, like so many are falling apart even right now, alone, ran away, not even two on the road, not even with Mary Magdalene and the other myrrh bearing. He was by himself. Jesus Christ, our God, knows that and knew that. He knows that about us and he knew that about Thomas, the one who said before all the other disciples, let us go to Jerusalem and die with him. He knows Thomas. He knows exactly what's going on with Thomas and how smart he is and that he himself in a way will say, I cannot believe and I will not believe unless I myself see the print in his hands and put my finger in the print of his hands because I've seen that pain and I know he died. And until I put my hand in his side, I will not believe. So crushed and so much had, did he suffer existentially with the Lord. And Jesus knows that. The disciples, though, in their great joy and in the life that they've already received, go to him, find him, just like you and I are trying to go to each other, though we're stuck because of this pandemic. Just like we're trying to reach out to each other through the internet right now, or through telephone calls, or through making food and gifts and sending cards. They can't help themselves because they know the joy and the hope of the resurrection. They've seen the Lord and they go to him and they bring him in. You and I have, are doing that right now. Even though this pandemic is here, we're joining together. We are church. We are one in the Lord. And we are behind closed doors, aren't we? The Lord knows Thomas' situation and he knows yours and mine, and he, nothing can stop him, and he goes right through those closed doors. Today, on the eighth day after the resurrection, <clears throat> Thomas Sunday, that we call, just for him. And he will go to everybody in need just for them. And he goes to Thomas, and he goes immediately after he says, peace be unto you, and he, show, he says, here, Thomas, here. Put your finger here. Place your hand here. The Holy of Holies, God himself, is letting Thomas, and not only letting, but answering his very, very deepest need and desire, existential need and desire. And he says, touch me. Handle me and see me. Do not be disbelieving, but believing. The Greek words of the continuous, do not be disbelieving, but believing all the time. In all places and in all situations, be believing. Thomas, we don't know for sure. Our hymns reflect that he did, that he actually did touch the Lord. You and I touch him all the time, especially when we receive communion. And I can't wait until we can do it all together again physically. 
but spiritually we are. And he says the most beautiful and emphatic statement, my Lord and my God. No one yet, out of all of the disciples, out of Mary Magdalene, out of Mary the mother of God, even in Scripture, the first one to say, my Lord and my God, Thomas. Isn't that amazing? The most beautiful, short, dogmatic statement. And it's preserved for us by the Gospel of John. And John was there, and he saw it, and he gives it to us so that we can believe and know that this is truly Jesus Christ, the Son of God. What an amazing God that we have. During this time, he is coming in through those closed doors. And along with the joy of the resurrection and the peace that he's giving to us, he says, receive the Holy Spirit. And that's what you and I are here for, that we're here to receive the very spirit that was inside of him, the life-giving spirit, the spirit sent from the Father that was able to make that body rise. And so he himself is saying, receive the spirit, the spirit of life and creation and all new, everything made new inside you to be in you like it is in me, to be one with you, to be one with me, take the Spirit, receive the Spirit. And he breathes upon them, and he says to them something so beautiful, anes, afes, he says, forgive, let it go. The sins that you forgive on earth are forgiven in heaven. And the sins that you retain in, on earth are retained in heaven. And you and I don't want to retain anything in heaven, especially sin. No one wants sin to be retained in heaven. That's not heaven. So we re understand and grow into understanding the sins that you forgive on earth are forgiven in heaven. And to allow heaven to be present now. His kingdom come now with the Holy Spirit. So we, in our, behind our closed doors, are still living the resurrection, still seeing Christ. Blessed are those who believe and do not see. We see with our eyes of faith. We heard in the Gospel today, Thomas, blessed are those who believe and do not see. So we see him with the eyes of our faith. We receive the Spirit through our faith, and at the same time, we're forgiving. So whatever it is that's happening, we let go to move on. The Spirit of God is a spirit of life, inspiration, innovation. He is the pioneer of our faith that perfects us, and He is the first fruits of salvation, Jesus Christ. And He gives us His Spirit so that we can have this inspiration and innovation. You and I, are meant to continually grow and change. And during this time, we are. And we're asking ourselves, what and how do I come out of this? The disciples came, started off afraid, behind closed doors, afraid of not only the Jews, but also the Roman Empire, afraid again and again, closing those doors. And then by the Lord coming to them for 40 days again and again, and you and I sing Christ is risen 40 days again and again, we greet each other with Christ is risen again and again so that it can be implanted with us and made cemented within us and existentialized within us again and again that Christ is risen above all things and destroys all all other things and so again and again we start to rise and keep rising with Christ the doors are open to show that the tomb is empty we never kneel during these 40 days to say that we stand in the presence of the Lord and we stand in his presence and we stand with the strength and the faith as the disciples learn to do because after receiving the Holy Spirit behind the closed doors, they did go out. And they went out with such power that in Acts that we heard today, beautiful Acts, 
everyone respected those disciples who were now apostles after the Lord ascended. They respected and revered them, it said, like we revere saints. That's why we Orthodox have the saints. We have the spirit of the original church and the people. And they said that some kneeled in front of Peter and John and the other disciples, and that they all, with great faith, brought their sick to the apostles. That they, it said in Acts just now, that they even knew that if the shadow passed over their sick, they would be healed. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? The reverence, the love, and the power of God to heal, to bless through his people. He comes through your closed doors and mine to innovate, to recreate, and to give us new life, the resurrection. I was doing some studying and reading and I was impressed, besides all of these beautiful gifts uh, with the candles for the Benevolent Fund, besides all the gifts and the good things that are being done by the medical personnel and the first responders who are there putting themselves for, for life, everyone is coming together in different ways even businesses. Food banks are empty because people need food and the lines are so big. So farmers have called up the government and have figured out ways for farmers to take crops that they wouldn't be able to get out to go to food banks. An innovation, an inspiration. The Economist this week the Economist came out with a beautiful article about how much innovation has happened now with so many different companies because of the need. And that, again, that spirit of the resurrection and the hope and the peace to bring out life is there with so many different companies all over. Researchers and pharmaceutical companies that would keep their patents in secret and would compete with one another are now opening up and they don't care about their patents as much and they're opening up and sharing and joining with one another like the disciples. No Thomas is alone, joining, becoming a network, a body in some way. The Holy Spirit can work in many different ways. And it can work through the companies, the businesses, but it only does it if it's going to be working through our hearts and our minds, our wills, because we are running these companies, these businesses, these farms, these hospitals. We are running these things and we can change and make a difference. Christ is amazing. His resurrection for us is everything. I am the resurrection and the life, he told Mary and Martha before he raised Lazarus from the dead. And he is here to say the same thing to us and to raise us all into new heights. And today, the day where we say Christ is risen, and we say it again, Christ is risen, and our souls are aflame again, Christ is risen, and our minds come up with new inspiration and new understandings. Christ is risen, and our bodies can become healed. Christ is risen, and we do everything that we can to change this world for the better. Christ is risen, and we learn from the past. Christ is risen, and we are no longer afraid or stuck in our homes. Christ is risen, and we will go out, and we do go out like those disciples who were once afraid and become the beacons of God and healing even with their shadows. You and I, too. Christ is risen.
truly he is risen. Christ is risen. Truly he is risen. Christos anesti. Let us go out. Let us go out. No longer close behind, behind closed doors. Let us go out and let us do what God wants us to do with the power of his Holy Spirit together with Thomas, the disciples, Mary Magdalene, and all. Amen. Grant that always being protected by your power to you may all.